I have two tables like this. First one has four columns, second one six columns, and I want to append them using Power Query. Later, I'm going to add another table, but this table has additional column. A new column contains value. I don't have value column in each of the two tables that I already appended. I want to deal with this using Power Query. However, I need to do this automatically without any changes in the query when I add the new table. I'm going to use some M code functions in order to achieve this objective. Hello and welcome to this new video from Excel Data Analysis Series APQ or Advanced Power Query. This is the video number four. Here is my data, all my tables in the same workbook. The first table contains only four columns, product, category, date, and count. Sheet one contains my second table containing six columns, product, category, status, and region were not in the previous one. I have also date and count. Next one, I have only four columns. I need to combine all of them together. And later, I'm going to add another table to the same Excel workbook, which contains additional columns, and I need Power Query to absorb all of this automatically. I'm going to start from a blank workbook. In order to connect to my data, I'm going to data ribbon on the left hand side, get data from file from Excel workbook. And here is my file, different column tables and import. This will trigger the navigator. I can see my file name here. And here is the three objects that I have inside this file, sheet one, sheet two, sheet three, and I can see the preview on the right hand side. So I'm going to select the header or the name of the workbook itself. And then I'm going to click on transform. This will trigger the Power Query Editor. Inside Power Query Editor on the right hand side, I have the name of the query coming from the name of the Excel file. Let me shorten it a little bit. On the middle, I have the preview of the data. You can see that Power Query used Excel.workbook in order to connect the data inside this workbook. Here you can see all the data related to the three worksheets that we have inside this workbook. The name of each sheet, and here is the column containing the tables or the data itself, the column named data. And we are concerned only with this column, so I'm going to get rid of the rest of the columns. I'm going to select the data column, right click and remove other columns. If you want to preview the data inside this column, you can just put your mouse in the empty white space here and you'll see a preview of the data as you can see down in the screen. You can easily notice that I have the headers of the column like column one, column two, column three and so on and so forth. And then in the first row, I have the name of the column, the real names of the columns. I need to promote these headers. I can do this using a function like table.promote headers. However, because when we are connecting to an Excel workbook, the user interface uses the Excel.workbook, I can go back to the source and then I can do some changes inside the Excel.workbook itself. Let me expand the formula bar. Here is the Excel.workbook function. And here is the first argument. The first argument is basically the address of the file inside a file content uh, function. And the second parameter is when we tell the Excel if we want to use the headers or not. If you put it like null, meaning that I don't want to use the headers, but if we change this null to a true, and let's try together, we just told Excel that we want to use the headers coming from the Excel sheets. So let's check again. Let's go back to the second step and let's check. You can easily notice that the headers are promoted. We can collapse the formula bar and now we are ready to expand these tables together and append this table together. In order to expand these tables, I'm going to use the expand button on the right top corner of the column. Once I click on it, it will open the expansion dialog box. Don't forget to uncheck use original column name as prefix. And here you go, you have your six columns, product category, date, count, status, and region coming only in the second table, but it will expand that entire table altogether. Once I click on OK, you will notice that I have some nulls when I don't have uh, information for a status or region, but in the second table and it's coming in the middle, as you can see here, I have all the data coming all together. I think this is not bad so far. I can just close and load this one. 
So I'm going to home, close and load, close and load to. I'm going to use the existing worksheet, the top corner, and click on OK. And here you go. You have your query loaded of 41 rows and have all six columns appended together. In the next part of this video, I'm going to add additional Excel sheets with different columns. And let's see how this query will handle it. In a separate workbook, I have additional two tables. First one you can see contains five columns, the product category, date count, and the quantity. And this is additional column. I don't have any quantity for the previous three tables. So I'm going to add this to our data and then refresh the query and see what will happen. So I'm going to select the sheet itself, sheet four, right click, move or copy create copy and here is our data file different column tables move to end and click on ok you can see that i have now four sheets one up to four i'm going to save and then close and going back to the excel workbook contains our query here is our query our table loaded from the query right click and refresh and let's see what will happen now it's refreshed you notice that i have 56 rows However, I have only six columns. I was expecting that I'm going to see additional column containing the data for the quantity, but this didn't happen at all. And let's try to check why this didn't happen. I'm going to my query, double click in order to edit. It will trigger again the Power Query Editor. And let's go back to the first step and see what will happen. Here is the source. I have the three sheets. Actually, this is an old preview. I can just refresh my preview. Now I have my four sheets and this is perfect. The query captured the, the fourth table, the fourth sheet and is going good. Let's check the data inside this one. It's also okay. You can notice that the, the head is promoted and I have the quantity column coming here all together. No problem at all. Remove other column. No problem. The last one expand. I didn't find my column here. You can see I have one, two, three, four, five, six. The quantity column didn't appear yet let's try to check this step from inside i'm going to use this wheel in order to check the step itself you can see that i have one two three four five i cannot see again i can't see the seventh column but if you try the load more button you will see that it will appear here you have here the quantity however it is not checked if I want to change this just for this um, for this table, I can just check this one and click on OK and everything will work perfectly. But this is not exactly my objective. My objective is to let the query absorb this automatically without any intervention. So I'm going to cancel. I'm going to this expand step and I'm going to delete using this red X. I'm going to delete this one. And the first step here, I need to get a list of all the column names. If you check, I have here my, my four tables. You can check here the column names. I can check also different column names here. And I have the quantity column name here. So I need a comprehensive list, a unique list of all header names. In order to get this, I need to add a function. It's a very easy function called table.columnNames. In order to write this function, I'm going to add another column to this table or to this query. So I'm going to add column ribbon, add custom column, I'm going to, co to call this column column names. I'm going to formula section and write my function table.column names. I have the function here. Please double check because sometimes this assistance writing the first word twice. So I'm going to backspace the first one. So here is my function table.column names. I'm going to open a bracket and the only column that I have is the data. I can just insert and close the bracket and hit OK. And here you go, you have additional column called column names. If you check, I have a list of all the column names, list for all column names, the third list and fourth list all together. Now I need all these lists to come together in one list. I don't need to have it in a separate list. So I'm going to again expand the column names in order to get all together appended in one list. In order to do so, I'm going to get rid of the data column. So I'm going to right click here and remove other column. Now I can just expand, expand to new rows, and I have the comprehensive list of all the column names. But this um, contains a repetition for sure, so I need to just get a unique list of all the header names. Going back to home, remove rows, 
remove duplicates and here you go you have a unique list of all the column names however now it is a table i need to convert this table into a list this is very easy again from transform i have in the any column section something called convert to a list once i click on it you will see that this table converted to a list of all the product names and the step renamed to be column names and this is exactly what i want in the next step i'm going to show you how we can use this list in order to dynamically expand our tables that we want to append all together now i need to expand the original tables the original four tables together in order to have them appended together but where is this table i have only a list of the column names remember that i used to have this four tables together in the second step so if i go back to the second step remove other columns i have here my four tables and you can preview the data so in order to recall this data after the column names step that i have here i need to add a new step and recall this data in order to do so i'm going to the f of x in the formula bar and i'm going to backspace whatever written here and try to write the step that i want to recall the step i want to recall is removed other column so let me try to write removed and here you go remove duplicates no remove other columns yes this is exactly what i want to recall and enter and you can see your tables are coming back here now let me try to expand this i'm going to use the same button don't use original uh, column names as prefix and i have my six columns here and even i don't have the quantity one that i just added no problem let me expand like this and i'm going to do some changes we reached the same point that we reached before however i'm going to check my formula bar and look at the function that the uh, user interface use in order to expand this column it called table to expand table columns and here you go here is the first argument the first argument is basically the table that you want to expand and the table that you want to expand inside a step called custom one you can check them here here is the name of the um, the step that we added the custom one step so the custom one is just calling the previous step which is basically the table that we want to expand and the second argument is basically the name of the column that we want to expand and remember that the name of the column was data let's double check again here is the name of the column which is data and then you have a hard coding for all the columns that you want to expand the columns that we selected from in, from the inner tables we have a list of one two three four five six all hard coded and then the names of the new columns that we are going to expand and again one two three four five six inside a list so i'm going to get rid of all of this no need for all of this and i'm going to replace all of them with our dynamic list of columns that we call column names so i'm going to write column names here you go and i'm going to hit enter and let's check now we have the additional column the quantity i'm going to just remind you i have here the list that we created and this list is a dynamic list whatever columns that we are going to add to our database it will be appended or will be added here so the expansion based on the column names is also a dynamic expansion whatever columns you are going to add it will impact your uh, query so let's close and load and let's check our new table you have the quantity here you have 56 rows no change in number of rows but you have the quantity information coming here in the last table now let's try to add some additional information and see what will happen so far we have four tables i'm going to bring additional table i have it here in the file more tables sheet number five and you can notice that we have one two three four five six and this one is completely new a new column contains the value in the previous four tables i didn't have any value so i'm going also to have a copy of this one inside our data source so move or copy create copy different column tables move to end and here you go you have your five tables i can just save close this one and let's go back to our query right click and refresh and here you go you have the additional column 71 rows you have the additional column value you can check your data down here and whatever 
additional columns you add in any of your tables or inside any other Excel worksheet that you add to the same workbook, it will be automatically expanded as we did together. That was all for today. If you like this video, please like it, leave me a comment and subscribe to the channel and you will find here some links to some important videos. You can just check them out. Thank you for your time and see you in the next video and bye.